Hi, I'm going to teach you about the Lifetime Investment Calculator. During this brief video, I'll provide an introduction on how to use it and where the information comes from so that you can dive deep and explore on your own. The goal of the calculator is to bring together uh, all of the best advice that the foundation creates each year. You can navigate to the calculator by clicking Best Advice and then clicking on Lifetime Investment Calculator. And on this page, you'll see the brief description, the calculator itself, and then a detail of all the parameters that you can configure in the calculator. So the information behind this calculator is uh, what the team produces each year. So I'll flip over to another page, um, but the core of it is the fine-tuning tables that are updated. And you can access this by going to Best Advice and then fine-tuning your asset allocation. This page, of course, includes the links to the podcast video, uh, as well as the fine-tuning tables that are uh, published each year. I opened up the fine-tuning table. And this PDF includes the percentage returns uh, from 1970 until present. And you'll notice that each page uh, has a number. So this is table B1, which represents the S&P 500 equity portfolio. I'll just scroll down to the next page to show you. Uh, table B2A represents the worldwide ultimate buy and hold equity portfolio with 50% in the US and 50% international. We'll be able to uh, flip between these tables in the Lifetime Investment Calculator. Uh, a little bit more about this PDF. You can see that across the top, we have uh, an equity and asset uh, allocation percentage. So you can go from being in 100% bonds uh, by 10% increments to being 100% in equities. So the one here in the middle would be 50% bonds and 50% equities. And you can see the allocation, uh, I'm sorry, the, the percent return for that allocation by year from 1970. Uh, and as you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you can see that it currently goes down to 2024 or 2023. Uh, there's also information in each of these tables about the worst six months, 12 months, 36 months, um, and then the worst drawdown that you would experience based off of that equity and asset allocation. The Lifetime Investment Calculator also includes the ability to uh, model distributions. Uh, so I'll, I'll touch on that today. And we have the fixed distribution update and the flexible distributions. Uh, and it also supports contributions. So uh, we have the ability for fixed contributions uh, and, and the, we're able to model the advice here in our lifetime investment calculator. So I'm gonna go right back to that calculator and I'm going to open it in full screen. I always recommend opening it in full screen by clicking this uh, button in the bottom right hand of the uh, corner of the calculator. This allows you to see the, the picture uh, and all these very small numbers uh, in a much larger view. To provide a high level orientation from left to right, you can see there's a column that uh, shows a, a year number and the sequence. And if you are doing any contribution or distribution, it will provide a dollar value here. In the middle is the primary table. So right now we're looking at uh, the equity and fin fixed income allocation, where you've got 40% stocks or 60% bonds, 60% uh, stocks, 40% bonds, and 100% stocks and 0% bonds. Each of these uh, columns currently has an end of year balance, a dollar return and a percentage return. And so we'll, we'll get into that in just a moment. On the right hand side is where all those parameters live. So these, this is the area that you can configure. You can choose the strategy that you're interested in. So if you remember, I, I showed in the PDF table B1 and table B2A, that ultimate uh, buy and hold worldwide 50-50 um, strategy. Uh, we can configure which of these columns show up in the middle. And so I will actually remove a couple of the com columns for simplicity. We'll just stick with showing the 60% stock and 40% bond allocation. Okay, and you can see that in the middle of the screen, all those other columns have, have removed. 
you can modify the sequence of returns and the duration. So right now, the duration is uh, 54 years from 1970 until 2024. Let's go ahead and just move this down to 20 years because I, I only want to look at a 20 year duration. Okay. And I can flip through each starting year. So in this case, I'm displaying 20 years on the left and the sequence of returns is 1970 until 1989. Right. I like to look at, you know, how things changed over time. And these are all just default values. So the starting value of $100,000 with a $6,000 contribution amount each year uh, for those 20 years would result in these bottom numbers. So the end of year balance at the end of year 20 uh, would be $1.7 million. And if I were to flip through and do the sequence year 1971, you can see how that would change. So with that same starting value and those same contributions, uh, the over a 20-year period from 1971 until 1990, uh, that bottom line value would be $1.6 million uh, just because of the sequence of returns. You can modify the starting value however you see fit. Like let's say you want to start with zero dollars uh, and you want to uh, contribute something very small like a hundred dollars a year for that 20 years, right? You can see how that hundred dollar contribution uh, from 1971 in this case, because we didn't change the starting year, uh, would change over time, right? And you can also see that the contribution scales with inflation. That's because I have this uh, scale contribution or withdrawal with inflation as yes. If I were to select that to no, then you could see that if you were to put in $100 every year, uh, you know, just a flat $100 in that year's um, uh, currency, right, without scaling it, then this would be uh, the return that you, you would have um, or the end of your balance that would be in the investment account uh, at the end of that 20 year period. You can identify when you want to contribute that first year. Uh, you can figure out how long you want to contribute. So if, let's say you wanted to, um, this would just be a little bit complex. Let's say you, you start with a thousand dollar investment in the first year, um, but you're, you're, you're going to start contributions at year 10. I don't know. And for each of those uh, contribution years, you're going to contribute that still that hundred dollar amount. So now you can see here that that $1,000 with, with zero contributions uh, grew to this point, and then you started putting $100 in uh, each year from uh, year 10 uh, until year 20. We'll probably dive in more on contribution strategies and distribution strategies, of course, in other videos, but this is just a brief introduction. Okay. I wanted to touch on distributions. And so we have the ability to model fixed distributions and flexible distributions. Uh, so a fixed distribution is where you identify a percentage of the starting value. So like, let's say that you had a million dollars and you wanted to pull out 4% per year. Uh, under the fixed distribution strategy, you would pull out $40,000 that first year. And then you would pull out 4% um, plus whatever the inflation is uh, in the next year uh, throughout your distribution uh, period. We also have a flexible distribution strategy. Again, these are all covered in the, in the podcasts, but you can model, in that case, uh, pulling out 4% per year, every year, um, not scaling for inflation. So if you were in a down year, uh, you would actually pull out less money than you had the, private, the, the previous year under the flexible distribution strategy. I need to refresh the page to reset the numbers to be able to show you that. So I just uh, go refresh, go back to full screen here. Okay. And then I need to do a couple of, uh, I'm back to all my default values. I'm looking at the S&P 500 strategy and I want to flip over 
to uh, to show you one of the distribution strategies. So here you can in the the default is to not calculate the distribution. Um, I'm going to do a fixed distribution, and now you'll see that the columns have changed a little bit. So just uh, jumping in here, uh, you can see now each of these columns shows an end of year balance, a distribution per a dollar value for that year, and then a cumulative distribution that shows how much you pulled out uh, throughout your distribution and process. Uh, and, and this by default, uh, we start with a 34, the 34 year distribution duration over here on the right, and the distribution percent is 4%. Uh, I'm diving really deep in here, um, but you can see now that in year 21, we start the distribution, our contributions in, and we start the distribution. In that first year, we pull out $65,000. And in year 22, we pull out $69,000 because uh, the distribution is scaling with in inflation. All right, you can play around with these values uh, as well as you know scaling the contribution and, dis and withdrawal with inflation. Uh, you can see nominal or real numbers uh, by toggling that over here on the right hand side and you can adjust distribution percentages uh, however you, you see fit so if you wanted instead of four percent distribution you wanted a three percent distribution um, you'd be able to, to model that so that's it for the brief introduction um, i look forward to sharing more videos with you thanks